It's nine months since I last worked, and the bills are piling up. Steak? Are you kidding? I don't even know what it looks like anymore. We've been a hamburger and hot dog family for years. My Social Security is spent before the check even gets here. If I'm sick, Medicare helps, but not enough. nation is in trouble, deep economic trouble. There are too few jobs for Americans who want to work. Inflation wipes out hard-won wage increases. Big corporations and rich individuals escape paying billions of dollars of potential federal tax revenue, while workers shoulder their full share of the tax burden. Health care is too costly, and it's inadequate Millions of Americans still face financial wipeout in case of serious, lengthy illness or major surgery. There are other issues, plenty of them. Housing, education, mass transportation, energy, and more. All in desperate need of resolution. These are real issues, bread and butter issues that hit all of us. Yet some claim that our real problem is the federal government. It's just too big. Whittle it down to size, they say, and a new day will dawn. Every election year has a phony issue. Big government, that's the number one phony issue for 1976. We've heard that song before. We heard it in 1964, remember? We heard it in the 1950s. Oh yes, we heard it in 1927 too. The AFL-CIO rejects the notion that our problem is big government. Leaders who lack vision, compassion, and program are the real problem. Big government is not a real issue, but unemployment is. Unemployment is economic public enemy number one. And its architects from the Nixon administration, Arthur Burns and others, are still in business today, masterminding the present economic mess. Joblessness, seven, eight, nine percent since the early months of the Ford administration, the highest levels since the disastrous depression of the 1930s. But that's official unemployment. It ignores millions of workers on part-time, and many more so discouraged, they've given up looking. It says they don't exist for statistical purposes. But they do exist. They have to eat. They have to work. They have to live. Real unemployment includes them. Real unemployment averaged not 8%, but 11.5% in 1975. In real terms, more than 10 and a half million Americans unemployed. And when Congress passed programs to put America back to work, veto from the White House. Thanks to this administration, no American worker can be sure the job he leaves tonight will still be there tomorrow. And don't look for things to get much better, not under this administration. Its own figures project 7.7 .7 official joblessness through 1976. And its forecasts have been notoriously optimistic and wrong. Big government? No, that isn't what creates unemployment. Badly led government does. Prices, another real issue. Okay. The rate of inflation has slowed some from the double-digit Nixon years. But it still cancels out workers' wage gains. Right now, today, the real spendable income of the average worker, what he can buy with the money he takes home, is actually about 5% less than it was four years ago. And inflation hits where it hurts most, 
at the supermarket. Bread is up. Potatoes are up. Eggs are up. Coffee is up. Bacon, chuck roast, steak, they're all up, and there's no ceiling in sight. Every trip to the supermarket is worse than the last one. A real bummer. This administration doesn't look for much improvement soon either. 6% plus inflation for this year and next. And like with unemployment, they usually guess on the low side. So it looks like you can kiss off this year's wage boost, most of it anyway, and next year's too. Inflation will eat them up. Big government? No. Small leadership. Taxes. This administration proposes to throw a bone to workers and a feast to the corporations and rich individuals. And they've already got one. The AFL-CIO seeks tax justice, a system that fairly taxes all. A system without loopholes for the corporations, for the rich, for oil firms and other multinationals encouraged by our nation's own tax laws to run overseas and take American jobs and technology with them. Close the loopholes. That would bring in some $30 billion the federal treasury needs. Maybe enough to wipe out the budget deficits conservatives cry about and to help fund needed programs. Big government is a phony issue. Tax justice is a real one. So is health care. Last year, Americans spent $120 billion on hospital and medical care. About $550 for every man, woman, and child in the U.S. Yet, millions of our people still lack proper medical care, access to it, or the ability to pay for it. Our nation is 15th in infant mortality, 19th in life expectancy for men, 7th for women. And this administration has no proposal to provide adequate health care as a right enjoyed by all Americans. It says the richest nation in the world can't afford the best health care in the world. The AFL-CIO says it can. We believe national health security is the answer, financed in the same way the social security system is. Big government isn't the real issue. The quality of health care is. There are other issues, a lot of them. And if we want to see them resolved, we have a job to do to elect as many candidates as we can to the United States House and Senate. And yes, to the White House, who will meet these issues head on with fairness and courage. Men and women who will put America back to work. Remember, we're citizens as well as unionists. We can use our votes to achieve our goals. We can do this job through COPE, our AFL-CIO Committee on My Political Education. And I'm calling from the COPE is your instrument. And, it uh, helps equalize the political like strength you know of workers with the giant corporations and wealthy individuals. Incidentally, a lot of these corporations are now trying to put the arm on workers for contributions to their political funds. They even want legal approval to propagandize our members to make a captive audience out of them. In 1976, the AFL-CIO, through COPE, will meet their fictions with facts about the issues and records of candidates. COPE will be doing plenty of other things in 1976, and it's counting on all of you for help, because COPE is people. Sure, National COPE has a computer to help labor's political programs. And it's developed a chart that organizes the nearly 100 different activities that go into winning politics. They're handy tools, but that's all they are, tools. It's people 
that really make Coke go. Always, most of all, people. People, you, the volunteers working year-round in Coke workrooms all across the country. You can get your election form. Right, the number is 627-2814. Talking it up at the job sites and in the plants, at union meetings and in neighborhoods. We're not alone either. Nobody wins alone. We work with others. That's an important part of the Coke program. Front lash, getting those young voters involved. The A. Philip Randolph Institute and the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement. Working in the minorities communities. Concerned seniors. Getting political action going among union retirees. All this is people, and the computer and chart are just your assistants. You're the folks Hello. who know the how of the COPE program. Yes, my name's And Clayton. you're the I'm folks who I'm make it work. You're the ones who fill out those old familiar three by five cards with the right information for use in COPE's registration and get out the vote campaigns. Then the data you provide is fed into the computer. And when you need it back, all organized and accurate and convenient. Bango, the computer does its thing. You know what we've always needed, badly? Good precinct walking lists. Now the computer produces them, and they're pure gold. With them, we get into the neighborhoods where our members live. And that's where the COPE program counts, right in our members' homes. And it counts at the job sites with distribution of materials, and in all those mailings you do. The point of the COPE program is that it works. In the 1974 congressional elections, only 38% of all eligible voters in the nation went to the polls. More than 50% of union members did. Listen, we're not satisfied with 50%, and we never will be. But it was that extra percentage that won for a lot of our endorsed candidates. The reason COPE really works is people. You. Fancy charts and computers exist only to serve you and help you make the COPE program go. And this year, all of us, working together, have got to make the COPE program go. Better than ever before. The stakes are high. November 2nd will be here before you know it. Between now and then, we have to make sure our members aren't faked out by the phony issue. The real issues, they're the ones that count. And when we do our job, every one of us, the real issues beat the phony ones every time. Let's be sure they do this time. My Social Security is spent before the check even gets here. If I'm sick, Medicare helps, but not enough. So you see, I know what the real issues are. It's nine months since I last worked, and the bills are piling up. I know what the real issues are. Steak? Are you kidding? I don't even know what it looks like anymore. We've been a hamburger and hot dog family for years. I know what the real issues are. Hey, don't talk to me about issues. The issues for working people today is survival. That's all. That's the real issue, not the phony issue. <laughs>